All right. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the uh, the tri board meeting. We have the finance committee, school committee here, select boards here. We also have uh, Representative John Seibeck here, who's going to talk to us, and we'll kick off with with you if you'd like to. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm looking at your agenda. It says it's a legislative section and legislative update. Really, a little bit of that as well. Thing. I'll try to be quick. Um, what I've tried to do is meet with with all the communities I'm representing. Uh, first item of business is really budget. Uh, and the governor came out with his proposed cuts yesterday, which actually, in the grand scheme of things, are very good, relatively speaking. Uh, I was in South Hadley last night, and one of the select board members said, well, you know, it's a 700, and I guess he increased uh, the deficit to $768 million. One of the select board members said, well, let's get deficits going up. And I said, well, 12 years ago, when I was first elected, it was Governor Romney's first term, the deficit was $2.5 billion. So when I'm looking at $768 million versus $2.5 billion, we're, we're in much better shape. Um, what, he's, what he's decided to do, and I'll just, I mean, when I proposed, presented last night, it hadn't appeared in, in, the, uh, in, in, in the press yet. Um, basically, what he's doing is to try to get there, $254 million is on the revenue side and $514 million is on the spending side. We as a legislature are going to have to approve something like $268 million of, of, of the spending. So he has the authority to cut any budget that's under the administration. So agencies such as Department of Developmental Services, uh, Department of Education, th those are things that he could cut, but he's not. Um, it, it, what, what they're trying to do are uh, do administrative cuts and do cuts to programs that haven't begun yet so that the impact is, is basically going to be minimized for all intents and purposes. What scares me was, or what initially scared me, was a proposal that they were going to cut uh, 40, I want to make sure I give you the right numbers, $40 million in transportation funding. Uh, but that $40 million in transportation funding is basically a higher increase in terms of positions that aren't, aren't being filled. So he is not cutting Chapter 90 money. He's not cutting Chapter 70 money. He, he, he's not cutting any local aid. Uh, he is doing some interesting things, and, and, and I support much of it. Senator Rosenberg, the new Senator President, supports much of it. What he's doing is taking um, statutorily anything that, that is capital gains above a billion dollars automatically goes into the rainy day fund. And he's taking approximately, I think it's 130, 131 million dollars in anticipated capital gains, and is going to look for our approval to not put it in the, in the rainy day fund, and, and use that as a vehicle for uh, for helping reduce it. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Um, he is not going to take money out of the rainy day fund other than that. So he's trying to preserve the rainy day fund, but rather put these dollars in and then immediately take them out. Uh, he's also looking at doing a a corporate tax amnesty program. In the past, we've done tax amnesty programs that were, in, were for individuals. And there's a reluctance to continue to look at another tax amnesty program for individuals because what you're doing at that point is basically telling people you don't have to pay your taxes. If you don't pay your taxes and things are bad, then we'll let you off the hook. Uh, but they've never done a corporate tax amnesty program. And, and that is, is going to present, let's just keep this out, going to present somewhere, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50, I think it's 50, 60 million dollars. I just can't find that one. There's a hundred million dollars worth of reversions. Um, and, and, and so it, it balances and it seems the feedback today was pretty positive, uh, both from the speaker, I think from the Senate president. Uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a reasoned approach. Uh, and I think it's one that, that makes some sense. Uh, the second reason why I'm here is Despite those budget issues, um, we are going to work on, a, on an FY16 budget. And typically, I, I look for input from the communities that I represent in terms of items to request in the budget. There were two items that were requested for Hadley last year. They were funded in the budget. They were vetoed by Governor Patrick. We overruled the veto and put them back in. And they cut them again at the end of the year. One of them is uh, the vehicle for the fire chief. My understanding is the vehicle is either here 
or on its way? It's uh, under construction right now, so. So, so the community has made a commitment for this vehicle. Uh, you're going to have to pay for it. And so my first thought is that I'm going to go to the chair of Ways and Means. And in essence, every member of the House and Senate can, can meet with their respective chairs of Ways and Means. And it's sort of like being a kid again going to see Santa Claus before Christmas. So you present your list and your wish list. Um, we've been restricted to three items on that wish list. Um, my take is that this item should not come as a new item. It's an old item. It's an item that we had, and, and we should get it back. Um, the second item that was on the list that, that was approved, that it vetoed, uh, was the funding for the dam. Mm -hmm. a and what, what I will need from you as a board, and I, I understand this board's been split in the past through the vote, but in essence, the question is, do I, I don't want to go forward asking either for the vehicle or asking for funding for the dam, if that's not this community, or, or you as a board uh, want me to look, look for. Uh, my meeting is on February 26th, so I'm not looking for an answer immediately, but I think anything that, that, that you can do in terms of deciding and telling me what I should be asking for would be very helpful. The last piece, and I'd be happy to respond to any questions, is also, now we'll deal with legislation. Uh, today at 5 o'clock, thank God, uh, was the end of the co-sponsoring period. Two weeks ago, or two and a half weeks ago, was the end of the, the bill filing period. There were 5,000, I think it's close to 5,500 pieces of legislation filed in the House and Senate. Uh, and for the last week and a half, actually two and a half weeks, I've been getting between 30 and 100 emails a day. Some from colleagues saying, please co-sponsor my bills. Others from constituents saying, please co-sponsor these bills. Uh, what I just want to do is tell you what, what I've done. Uh, if you know my background, I filed 66 pieces of legislation this session. Uh, people know my background in terms of health care. Uh, I filed a telemedicine bill. Uh, I filed a bill on pre-authorization of medical services. What's been happening, in, and it's, it's I'll use the example of MRIs. So you go for an MRI, you call your insurance company, they pre-authorize it, you go and get the MRI, and then the insurer says, I'm sorry, we're not paying for it. So we, we basically leave the, the provider, the hospital, footing the bill, and they then try to, to collect from, from, from the consumer, and I think that's unfair. If you as an insurer said, yes, it's covered, then I think it should be covered. And if you didn't do your due diligence to find out that, you know, if Molly Keegan's policy is in effect today, well, you know, shame on you, and it, it shouldn't. Um, I filed a bill on competitive, cost-effective municipal health insurance, which is, in essence would require anybody to provide you with your loss ratios and do it immediately. Uh, for the GIC to allow people to enter at various times, so in essence it, it opens the door for municipalities to, to see do I want to choose X or choose Y. So you're not forced into something based on, uh, on poor timing. Um, I think a lot of people know I've got, I've got hearing loss, so I've continued to file legislation for insurance coverage for hearing aids, uh, a lot of dental uh, things on fluoride varnish, uh, restoration of, of Mass Health Dental, uh, a cancer drug repository program, uh, and a few other things. Uh, for school committee, I, I've filed a piece of legislation on um, school choice reimbursement. And based on last night, I really should expand it to not just school choice, but charter. So in essence, have it operate almost like a circuit breaker. So if a school loses more than 10% uh, in a class or 5% overall in a school, there will be a cap in terms of what you would lose in terms of your, your, your dollars. So you could plan better. So that if for some reason, if, you know, it, and we're here about it, you know, so, so that, let's just pick on the Chinese uh, emerging charter school. They expand to various grades, and you start to see this migration out. You should, when the community does its budget at town meeting in the spring, and then you find out in September you're now losing 10 or 15 students across a couple of different grades. Uh, you should not have to juggle about how do I how do I replace that hundred or 150 thousand dollars, particularly if they're across multiple grades and that you can't deal with with reducing a teacher or the like. Um, I also did one similar, um, I had a situation in one of my communities where someone left under school choice, uh, this was an older student, the student was sent to an alternative school, uh, the student was over 16 and dropped out, 
um, the community that received the student was required to notify the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed, but they never notified the sending community. So the sending community still sent their $10,000. And I think that if a student is on a school choice that student leaves, then you as a sending community should be notified. Um, done some things on, on liquor licenses. Um, we had a problem with one community where there's an individual who has been running a, a business for over a decade. That individual is legally in this country, but is not a U.S. citizen. And right now, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you're not eligible to receive a liquor license. And it makes absolutely no sense to me. I'm not talking about somebody illegal. Somebody who's here, they're operating a business, should be able to, uh, to do that. On the environmental side, I'm, I'm looking to eliminate microbeads in cosmetics and cleansing products. Uh, I'm looking to do something on towing. In, es in essence, requiring something akin to quarry checks for people before they get licensed as tow truck operators. So if your car gets towed, at least know the person who's taking it is, is an upstanding individual, not somebody who's going to take it to, to a shop shop. So that, in a nutshell, is, is what I'm trying to do over the next term, and I'd be happy to respond to any questions you might have on any or all. And I thank you for the opportunity. Well, I, listservs um, for school committees are characterizing some of those cuts that uh, we made to the education budget as my C cuts, even though the governor is not. Okay. Specifically, circuit breaker cuts and the charter school reimbursement cut. I am. We, we've always played this game with circuit breaker cuts. Yep. Uh, and, and I think, I mean, I, I strongly support that. I know that there, there's been a listening tour. I think it's time, it's well overdue, that, that we need to look at, at A, what is it in the foundation budget, mm -hmm. recharacterize that. I think charter, charter schools should not be out of the same pot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's things that we need to do to, to basically get everything up to 2015. Uh, but that's, that's, that's excellent because we've seen other governors uh, play that game, if you will. You know, Governor Romney said about increasing taxes, but he increased virtually every fee, which ultimately cost more than taxes. Uh, Governor Patrick talked about I'm not cutting local aid, but in point of fact, did cut certain segments of local aid. So um, that's that's good to hear. That a uh, I think we need to watch that. From the school issues again about like your charter school, vote the vote school here is also an issue. I mean, we have no input whatsoever into how they run their business. Um, they're looking for a new building now. Um, their tuition keeps going up, and we have no input into it. We just get hit with this bill. You pay the tuition for the Vogue Vogue School. The Vogue School is great, and we need more of Vogue Schools, but for us not to have any input into it and any, it's just like the charter and the school of choice. Yeah, and on the other side of the river, I mean, I've, I've been to the Vogue School, and, and I know that there's a, there's a special commission that's been looking at it and look at this issue. I, I think issues of school buildings for Vogue Schools need to be addressed. Um, the way it is structured, although less than 50% of the student body at Smith Vogue comes from Northampton, the Northampton School Department, Northampton taxpayers are on the hook for the building. Uh, so, so that's not, not shared, but I think it's something we need to, again, address and, and, and look at in terms of what makes sense in 2015 as opposed to a 1915 model. But, um, we've been there and actually we're going back in a few weeks, we being the legislative delegation, look at that very issue. Um, one, one last thing for me, and this is just my personal, uh, I have a problem, I've always had a problem in terms of school choice when individuals are choosing, or families are choosing out and sending their children from a higher performing district to a lower performing district, either because it's convenient, because the family happens to work in another community, or for something like football. Uh, my understanding is school choice is there to help students in, in poor performing districts to have an opportunity to do better. Uh, and so I get frustrated when I see people who are going, rather than going from a, the lower school to, to the better one and the opposite. So I think there are a number of things we need to address relative to uh, charter, school choice, and, and, and Gilford, I'm glad you brought up the Vogue School. I hadn't even thought about it from, you know, from, from this side of the river. Yeah, it operates essentially as a regional school yes. with only representation from the right. Can we do that? I, I, I think there's also a unique um, charter or yeah, they're, they're unique to the state. Right. Yeah. So it's a its own animal. 
Yeah, they had a huge increase last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which well, was they've been of increasing <coughs> every year since I've come off yeah. the board. It's been it's a, it was a big going all the time. Year. I mean, they have costs too, and you know, so they kind of divide it out between all the communities that use the Smith Folk School. It's the other Franklin Tech or whatever, or Dean Tech in Holyoke. You know, they all have their. Uh, I don't think that Franklin Tech. I think it has a representative board from the communities. It's not all from the town in which it's located. So they have at least some. That's try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be, that'll be more, that'd be nice. But one of our students could go to Franklin Tech if Smith School <laughs> didn't oh. offer oh, what they were looking for, okay. too. So yeah. Maybe it needs to be like a, well, is there going to be a bigger push again from the new, new governor as he talked about pushing for more regionalization? That was big with Patrick. No. He, he has not Turned done to anything. That. Uh, I shouldn't say that, but he, he, all we've heard from him really is, dealing, is storm related. Uh, you know, in all honesty, <laughs> less uh, understandably so. So, um, the, the only discussions that we're having and looking are A, he is living up to commitments that he made and, and statements that he made d during the campaign. So, no one is, is pointing a finger and saying, wait a minute, you said you're going to do X and you're actually doing Y or proposing Y. So, so there's consistency there. Uh, but. We haven't really had an opportunity, and, and because he's a new governor, he, you know, if, if we're if we're looking at uh, a governor who had already been in office, his budget would have been released by about January 28th. Governor Baker's budget doesn't come out until <clears throat> early March, and and that does not give us a great deal of time. Uh, they did meet, they being the Secretary of Administration and Finance, the two chairs of Ways and Means to develop and, and agree, and they, they did agree on consensus revenue figures. They're looking at roughly about 4, was it 4.8 percent, I think, uh, in terms of growth estimate. So we know how much money we have to spend. Uh, we're waiting to see, and so his budget will come out in, in early March. Um, we will see the House budget probably in early April. Uh, and and I, one of the questions that always is asked, you know, can we get a, an early local aid resolution? And, and I would be cautiously optimistic and hope that we could so that that is at least a floor. I think an important part of that is you have a Senate president who understands towns that exist in addition to cities. I, I recall having a problem with, a, with a, um, a home rule petition that needed to pass a couple of years ago, and one of the chairs of the committee said, what's the big deal? I said, it's going to pass because the, the vote from town meeting is going to be stale. If we wait another month, we'll have to go with and have another town meeting. So what's the big deal? They meet every week, don't they, or every other week? <laughs> and, and so as a city person, I had no idea how, how, how town government operates. Uh, and, and so I think, uh, I'm hopeful we can see a local aid resolution that will at least establish what the baseline would be and, and, and say we're committed to give X number of dollars in local aid. And if the revenues continue to grow in, in April and May, then, then perhaps it could go up higher. But, are you looking at this money um, being for 2016, like the uh, North Hadley Dam? I mean, if that money is now gone, and we kind of matched it with CPA mm -hmm. money here, I think there was a tie-in on the CPA money that if yours went, that went. So I think they're going to be reapproaching us for CPA money again uh, to extend it. What, I, what I'm looking for is, is if, if this board is saying, that that still is, is something that you want me to pursue, that I will, and, and my discussion with, on these two items, on the vehicle mm -hmm. and on the dam, is to say to Ways and Means, look, you know, what, we shouldn't even have this discussion. Well, what's the timeline, John? What's It, it would be the FY16 budget. So, so, so the budget July would be July, July 1. Uh, I have, I have unless, uh, and, and you know, this, this is, I shouldn't even bring it up. You know, unless there was some, through some miracle, money was falling from the heavens. And what we started to do was, in a supplemental budget between now and July, start restoring some of the things uh, that that had been cut either by, by Governor Patrick or, or uh, yeah, virtually all by Governor Patrick. Uh, but, but my plan is I, I'm got to meet with Ways and Means and say what my priorities are. And, and it strikes me that 
my number one priority has to be something that was approved in the budget. But the Hadley money was approved in the budget. It's the only municipality of the ones that I represent that had money in the budget that would, uh, number one, specifically, and number two, it was one of the few communities that, that had that money vetoed. And, and so, you know, I don't feel <coughs> ethically it's, it's, it's proper for me to say, all right, I want money for Grand Granby or East Hampton or South Hadley for, for a project, knowing you had the money and the money then disappeared. Particularly, you know, in the situation with the vehicle. You're not facing an expenditure that you, you bought that, that vehicle on good faith, you had the money that, that, that we, we got in the budget for it. Um, that should not, if, if I can't restore that money, then in essence you have just taken up, how much was it? 50,000. So, so you just took a basically a $50,000 cut in local aid mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes. Mm -hmm. So I just have a little bit of information. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree that our, I, my recommendation is uh, the, our number one priority has to be for the $50,000 because we we did do all the things that you talked about and you were mm -hmm. very good to, to us and we were able to get a uh, $50,000 appropriation in the state budget that was then uh, cut by the governor when he needed money that he should have known that he was he was running into that trouble on uh, and this is the past governor not the current one uh, so we do need to we do need to identify that as a, a priority the CPA did submit an article for the town meeting, and you haven't seen it because the deadline's not come yet, uh, to extend the funding timeline on that article from last uh, town meeting. So uh, basically uh, push the clock deadline back another year. Can I just ask a question? I don't, and I don't know if this would be appropriate for a representative to take back or not, but just last week, I think we were talking about the um, the uncertainty in the language regarding the the, the chargebacks with employee benefits. And remember that conversation? Last week. I don't know, two weeks. Two ago. weeks ago, whenever it was. <clears throat> but we were talking about the fact that that it seemed that there was a an, an edict set, um, but nobody knew how to implement it. So oh, people yes, were getting the bills. And yeah. So the yeah. shared costs for retiree. Um, the apportionment of retiree health care costs that's allowed under the, the uh, under the, the the health insurance reform. So, uh, an employee who works for Hadley and then goes on yes. to Gardner and then yep. retires from Gardner, we get an invoice from Gardner, and there's there's no mechanism within the law as to know how much the the uh, the bill really should be or how to apportion. Uh, uh, the costs across maybe four or five different towns, depending upon the worker. There, there hasn't been legislation filed to address that issue. There has been. Of, yes, in terms okay. of look at the apportionment, and it's something that, that clearly is a problem, is more of a problem out here than it is in other parts of the Commonwealth. Yeah. In part because you get people who are working uh, part-time jobs in, in, in multiple, multiple communities. Districts. You may have a part-time town accountant who's working in three or four different communities, one day a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so uh, th there has been legislation looking at that. Uh, I, I'm certainly supporting and support of that. I mean, I used to chair public service. So I went from retirement to consumer protection where I now I deal with liquor. Uh, and, and one day a week, when I found that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, it, it, it is something that we've had some special legislation to deal with some particular circumstances in the past, uh, and, and the legislation being filed is to look at trying to address this, with spelling out literally the mechanism mm -hmm. of, of what each community's responsibility is. Okay. And what about legislature for the, um, been talk amongst this tri board about treasure, treasure collector, and we'd have to have special legislation for that? Yes. And, and if, if you're going to do that, uh, that would be something to put on the warrant, it would be a home rule petition. I can't file a home rule petition without the approval of town meeting, so I need a certified copy from the town clerk. Okay. And the reason for that is it, it prevents, um, Massachusetts is a unique state, it's one of the only ones that has a right of free petition. So any resident of the Commonwealth can, can request a, a law. Uh, I, as your representative, am required to file that legislation, whether I agree with it or not. 
there's a, there's a little, if I disagree with it, there's a little box I check that says by request. By request basically means I'm filing it, but I don't necessarily agree with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reason why we want the certified copies is so that you can't have Virtually anything. So, so you get a disgruntled resident say, "Well, let's eliminate the tax pay, tax collector's position, or let's eliminate the town accountant's position, or um, eliminate the town administrator's position." We actually had that once when I was when I was a select person. Um, and, and so, those things, unless they are approved at town meeting, uh, it's different, obviously, for cities with with the mayor or the city council vote, they can't go forward. But once they do. Uh, we can go forward with them, and, and unlike those 5,000 plus bills that had to be filed by two weeks ago, home rule petitions can be filed at any time. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I actually have one more question for sure. you. So, how is the transportation chapter 90 shaping up? Are, we, are they going to propose 200 or 300 well, I think, million? I, I think the, the indication when, when Governor Baker released the extra $100 million. Uh, that he's giving the money that, that Governor Patrick did not release. I think it's a clear signal that, that you've got a governor who, who's going to support this. Uh, and, and, and I suspect we'll support full funding. Um, I, I think politically it would be difficult for Governor Baker to now cut, unless what he's looking at in terms of these cuts right now are cuts of 1.9% across the board and he's looking for cuts in the judiciary and, and other things clearly not under his control. So I think if there would be any cuts to Chapter 90, they would be probably tiny cuts uh, and, and would, would mirror what he's doing, I'm just speculating, mirror what he's doing in terms of across the board cuts in other areas. But the, but A, if he, I would guess if he was planning on cutting or not fully funding Chapter 90, he would not have released that $100 million. He would have better just leave things where they were. But he hasn't actually said he's going to propose another three-year bond bill with 300 each year. He's not, but, but the other thing he could do, I know we talked about that last night, I mean, a bond bill is almost like a, a, a menu in a restaurant. So what happens is we get these bond bills, and, and you'll recall the bond bill where we got the money for, for, for the dike. And, and so it was a situation, what you're doing is you're putting a whole list of things in. There's never enough money to fund all of them. But you're in essence saying, okay, Governor, you can, you can fund, or you can spend money on any of these projects. So, um, and, and you can choose. So I'll take this project or I'll take that project. And there's not enough money to do them all, but, but, but you can choose the ones you want. What typically happens, uh, bond bills are often in effect for five years. Uh, with a change in administrations, a governor may say, okay, I, I now want to get rid of these items. Or, or there are certain items that, you know, I'm not going to fund this. This is not a priority for me. So there could be a new bond, could be a new bond bill coming up this year or, or perhaps in 2016 that says, all right, we're not going to eliminate, you know, items 10 through 15 that, that are currently on that, that menu list and, and add some other items. We know we're not, we know we're not going to uh, do items 10 through 15. And so from a bond rating perspective, too, it, 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 you don't want to have this list that just keeps grow, growing and growing and growing. So it, it's possible we could be uh, looking at an abbreviated uh, bonding list of, of potential projects. And, and, and it's the same whether we're talking about the transportation bond, the environmental bond, uh, any of the bonds would, would work the same way. Well, we do have in the 2014 environmental bond, we have one, a million and a quarter to redo the water lines on yes, Route order. 9. So we've, we've requested the former administration to release that uh, money and we didn't get any feedback whatsoever. It may be that this project will move forward this summer, maybe next summer. Um, so we might be asking for your help to get that money released. Yeah, I mean, Mass Highway is going to do the bulk of the work. It'd be yes. great if we could slide in. I mean, I, it, it makes perfect sense if you're, if you're going to do X. You don't want to dig the road up again and have to do it. So while, while the construction is happening, 
why not kill two birds with one stone? Yeah, and there's a bunch of guys out in the middle of the road right now probably yeah. saying the same thing. Yeah. No, I, I understand. Anybody else? Mr. Miskowski? Yeah, uh, on that transportation bill, does that cover anything with the infrastructure, sewer and water lines throughout the communities? Um, typically, typically sewer and water lines are going to go into the environmental bond bill as opposed to the transportation bond bill. Right, so, so what might happen is, let's say we were going to do, let's say we do all of Route 47. Uh, and, and, and so you may want to do the, the, the construction, so you're going to reconstruct Route 47. The, the road project might be in the highway on the transportation bond bill. And water or sewer might be in the environmental bond bill. And that's what we were just referring to. So, so looking at those, um, the items that are were in the, um, the bond bill for, for those water lines, we know that, that Mass Highway is looking to, 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 to do the project. That's a part of the cell is saying, okay, if Governor, you're going to do this, this highway project as part of the priority for Mass Highway, and you want to do the water at the same time, it, it, you know, you, you're going to demonstrate the need for the water line, but, but if you demonstrate the need for the water line, why not do them at the same time as opposed to doing the road and then a year and a half later digging up the entire road to replace the water line, and you're basically paying twice for it. Yes. Are they doing anything with sewer lines uh, down that stretch? No, I do not believe so. No? No, I think there's <coughs> only a water line. The, re the reason I, I asked you about that, uh, uh, is uh, we just recently did a short street on uh, Loranna Drive, spent a quarter of a million dollars on it, and that's not our oldest line that's down, down below the ground. And uh, I think this town is going to be facing millions of dollars in, in uh, replacement of lines in the near future. And it's not just happy, it's every community around us uh, uh, got the same thing. Nobody looks at, at the, what's buried in the ground, but they, they really need to. So you know, I don't know where all that money's going to come from to, to do that. So, so since you're here, I'm going to ask the board if they want me to put the uh, police vehicle or the dam money back on the agenda to fire, talk about again. The fire vehicle. Fire vehicle, sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, or do we want to let our original votes stand? Our original vote was to support both, both mm -hmm. items. If we want to put it back on the agenda to talk about, or if we just want to let the vote stand. Did I vote yes on it? You did, actually. <laughs> no, well, I, I have to say that I would have to vote yes on, not even though I'm not in favor of the pond up in North Adley, but because town meeting approved it and went forward with it, then I would have to support it. Yeah, I, I mean, unless there's a significant change of circumstances that we haven't mm -hmm. discussed and we should, then I would think that town meeting vote would stand. I agree. So we those are still... Okay. That's still a valid vote from us. Um, that saves you time, I No, it does. I, I, and and um, I, you know, I haven't heard from the other communities. Uh, as I said, this one is almost, I've got three, three items I can put on, and, and this one's not counting as one of the three. I think this is just, for, for fairness, give me this item. Yes, I agree. I, I don't always follow the rules, so, so I'm going to ask for three others. Uh, and, and I know that, that David has sent me a couple of other capital items that we may add to the list if, if, if I'm able to uh, to do that. So between now and February 26, you said, if yeah. there's anything that we wake oh, he, up in the he, has sent me, he has sent me a, a list of uh, three or four items, correct? Yeah, and the select board have that in their package yeah. tonight. Okay. So the items that you have in your package for capital, if, if I can swing it, I'll ask for those as well. Uh, but I also have to be sensitive to representing three, you know, three other communities. We understand. So for the clarity of the record, the 50000 for the, the fire vehicle is? I'm requesting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I know that I'm requesting the 50000 for the fire vehicle and, and, and we're going to the money for the day and saying, just give us back what, what, what we had and, and we'll, we'll call it. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you for coming. Yeah, for coming. My pleasure. It's always good to see Thanks. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Busy schedule.
Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you. Yeah. you really didn't answer my question about any money you said going to be or what they're going to be infrastructure. <clears throat> well, I, or nothing. It, it's hard to say, Johnny, without without seeing a number one the budget. Number two, I don't know what the, this governor is going to change anything in terms of how things are funded. If you remember way back when, when you were on the board years ago, we, 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 we had a, basically it was, it was free money. It, it wasn't even a loan. It, it wasn't, you know, the revolving fund was there. So are we going to stay with, with the revolving fund with, with low interest loans? Are we going to go to zero interest loans? Are we going to go with grants? Um, so the governor hasn't really said exactly what his strategy is going to be. I just don't feel comfortable saying, oh yeah, it's going to be X number of dollars the way it was under Governor Patrick with Governor Baker. He hasn't shown us anything yet in terms of what will be there or how infrastructure is going to be paid. Well, I saw that meeting you had of JFK here that the communities were very much concerned with, with infrastructure. Yeah. And it was, that was one of a, one a priority list to, to look at. It, it, it was, and there were a number of bills that came out of that session of JFK that are being filed. But the reality uh, is, I haven't seen what, what's in the House budget or knowing what Wayne Means is going to do. But more importantly, what the governor's approach is going to be. Is he going to say we're going to do grants as we used to? In which case, it'll probably be less money because it's not going to be a revolving fund with, with loans. If he decides to do loans, is he going to continue to do uh, low interest or zero percent loans, given what the market is? Um, so I, mm -hmm. I just don't have the answer yet. Uh, I'll be happy to give it to you once I get it, but it's still too early with this administration to know what he's going to do. Yeah, too many snowstorms. <laughs> that too. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.